Hello, my name's Mark and I am GK Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinist today to do the next lesson on this series of programming a bush with G-Code. So this week, we're gonna look at parting off. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So if you've been following along with this series, you'll know that we've been making this bush here and this is the final stage. We're gonna part the bush off from our stock material. So we're gonna start off with an N6 search number and an operator's note to let the operator know this is the parting off section. Now, anything in brackets is not read by the machine and our semicolon there at the end means end of block. So once the machine reads that, it moves on to the next line. So this is our safety line. I've spoke about this in great depth on the very first lesson of this series. So let's just go over what these mean quickly. So our G54 is our work shift datum and we've set this zero to the front face of our part. Now you may have set it to where your part and off blade goes, but in this case, we've set it to the front face. So all Z movements will be minus if we are cutting into material. G21 sets our metric measuring system. Our G90 is our absolute coordinate system. G97 is our RPMs. It sets the machine to standard RPMs. So if we put in 2000 RPM, the machine will spindle, we will accelerate to that. G80 cancels any active cycles that may be in the machine. So if we've just been doing a roughing cycle, we stop halfway through and we decide to part off, that cycle will no longer be active because this G80 cancels it. And G40 to cancel any cutter compensation. So next we need to call the tool, our parting off tool. So T0606 calls in tool six and our data table system six. So it calls in any information that we've stored on this tool under tool six as well. So I like to keep the tool and the data table the same. So MO6 is our tool change. This rotates that tool turret there and brings down our parting off tool to the zero position. Okay, so when you're setting your part and off tool, in this case, I have zeroed my tool on this corner right here. If you've zeroed it on the other side, you will need to add the width of the part and off tool to your measurements and movements here to make sure our part is the correct length. Okay, so we're going to be using a G96 constant surface cutting speed for this sequence. So before we enter that, we need to add a speed clamp. Now this stops the machine going above a certain RPM. Because as we're parting off, our parting off tool is going down to X zero, and that's gonna cause the machine spindle to go to an infinite speed or as fast as it possibly can. Now we don't want that. We don't want it going above 2,400 RPM. So by issuing a G50 speed clamp such as this, the machine will not go above 2,400 RPM. Now that's constant surface cutting speed I was talking about. We activate that with G96 and we give it a value here in S. Now this is our constant surface speed value. So I've given it a speed in S of our constant surface cutting speed followed by an MO3, which turns the chuck on in a clockwise fashion. Now, if you've got your tools loaded upside down, you might need MO4 in this case. So with everything set up, we can now start moving the machine. Our spindle's running, so G00, a rapid travel command. We're gonna rapid our tool to the front of our part. And I'm coming up in X, just above the stock bar diameter size there of 45 millimeters. And we're coming 10 millimeters away from the front face of our part there where the datum is set at zero. Now, we could just rapid straight to position. But I like to rapid to the front of the part first, just to make sure all the tools are set up correctly. And in my case, I find it gives me a bit more confidence that I know I'm going to spot a mistake at this stage before we get too close to the material or the spindle or the chuck. So we don't need to add a G00 again on this line because it's still active from the line above. We can omit this, the same as the X45, but I've added both of these here just to show that it doesn't matter. If we do add them there, nothing bad is going to happen. The machine just reads this, goes, I already know that and carries on reading the rest of the line. So you can omit the G00 and the X45 from this line if you wish. So Z minus 20 millimeters is, takes us to the back end of our parts. Now our part is 20 millimeters long. So because I have zeroed the correct edge of my parting off tool, I can put in the exact length of the part and it will move to that position. 
So MO8 turns the coolant on. So I turn the coolant on once I've done my initial rapid to the front face of the part. I can check the tool, make sure everything looks about right. And then I turn the coolant on as I'm moving towards my position of my first cut. It stops any coolant splashing on the screen so we can see what's going on. So now we're switching over to GO1, our feed rate move. So all positions now are going to be needing a feed rate because we're controlling the speed of our tool. And that also ties in with the speed of our spindle because we're using that constant surface cutting speed. So I've gone down to X 0.3 here. So it's just going past the center line to remove any pips. Now, because this part has a bore in it, we don't necessarily need to go right to the center line. We could have stopped at 16, just below 16 millimeters, maybe 15 and a half millimeters, and the part will leave the stock material once we get to that bore. But I've come right down to clean that face up a little bit, so we've got less work to do when our finishing tool or our facing tool comes in on the first op again when we make the next part. So I've added a feed rate here at F0.6. So this is coming down at a feed rate of 0.6, nice and steady to remove our part. Now parting off often takes a lot of fill. If you've ever done it on a manual machine and broke many parting off tools, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we may need to play around with the feed rates on here to make sure this cuts nice, depending on the tip grade of our parting off tool and the material we are removing. So once we've come down to height, I've rapided the tool back to the stock bar size plus five millimeters x45 now the part shouldn't be on that bar anymore it should have been in the work catcher or at the bottom of the machine but i've come back up to x45 and not just moving away in z straight away just in case sometimes tips break sometimes the part might not have passed off clearly we might not be aware of this we might be deburring parts or something else so i'm coming up to x45 as a safety move we're coming away from the bar in X first before Z, just in case the part didn't part off. So once I'm clear of the stock bar size, I can now wrap it back to a safe distance in Z. So again, I'm coming just by the end of our part here. Now we could have wrapped it straight back to our tool change position at this point, but again, I like to do this extra move just as a safety precaution, just so I can see everything is all fine when I'm looking through the window. And it only takes a split second of the time to do this. So once the tool's back somewhere safe, I'm now removing it from the working area and putting it back to the tool change position. So I'm calling G53, our machine data position, and X and Z0. So this just takes the tool back up away from the spindle and the material and to a safe tool change position. Now during this move, I turn the coolant off with MO9. G97 puts us back into the standard spindle mode. This is going back to revs per minute modes now. Now I've done this at the end of this block. So this is, the machine is always in G97 and not G96. I like to keep the machines all standard. That way if I drop in somewhere else, maybe I stop this program and move into a different section. I know that um, we're gonna be in the correct RPM that I'm expecting. And of course, MO5 there turns off our spindle. Now this turns it off if you're in MO3 or MO4 direction. So I'm not finished here with an MO1 like the other parts. I've finished here with an M30 because this is our last uh, tool. The machine has finished its cycle at this point. So M30 stops the cycle and rewinds it back to the start. And it will stop there unless we have the continuous cycle button pressed, in which case the next part will start already. So M30 stops our program and rewinds it back to the beginning. So that's the end of the bush program. We have now completed an entire bush and we just finished parting it off. But I do have one more lesson about this bush and that's coming up soon. And that's different ways we can make it and different techniques we could use to maybe speed up this program a little bit more. And this is great if we're doing mass production, maybe we have a thousand of these to make. So we're gonna look over the program and look at ways we can speed this up to save a few seconds here and there. So once we have a big run and a big cycle active, we can save quite a bit of time by just removing a few lines here and there of the program. So we're gonna look at that in the next lesson. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you want to learn more about G-Code programming, I have a website that teaches G-Code with online courses over at gcodetutor.com. I also teach machine shop maths, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacture, 
health and safety, and lots of many other things. So pop over to G-Code Tutor and see what is currently on offer.